Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, if you follow VGC, you may know that the Victory Road World Cup has just started. And if you don't, then let me fill you in. Um, Victory Road is probably the largest unofficial VGC tournament organizer in the scene. And every year they organize a World Cup between players from a bunch of different countries. And it's sponsored by uh, big companies. Uh, Elgato is the big one this year, I believe. Um, Anyway, so each country's team fields eight players a week, and they fight it out to take the overall match, and ultimately there's a group stage and a bracket and all that, and a potential tiebreaker each match if there's a 4-4 tie. Um, I am actually playing for Team India, since half my family is from there, and I have OCI. So I thought I'd show off my first match uh, against Ola Peterson Nordby of Norway. Um, I'm playing this relatively standard Palyrex team with Alchemy as a bit of spice, as you might have seen in my uh, Reshiram video a few weeks ago. Um, I'm not going to dive into calcs or even show off the paste uh, this time, as I may be reusing elements of the, of the team in the future, um, although I definitely do plan to switch it up. Um, anyway, let's dive straight into this best of three set in Team India's first, uh, first week of the World Cup. Okay, so Ola brought an, a very interesting Eternatus Groudon team. Um, it looks fairly standard apart from, uh, apart from that Eternatus, but... Uh, Still very scary. Um, I think this is a this was a great matchup for uh, for my Calyrex, obviously with the the four um, Pokemon that it's super effective against. But only if I can get Trick Room up, since uh, Groudon and Eternatus can both do big damage into it. Uh, if uh, if I don't get that speed control, um, so normally Palkia is my go to setter here, but of course Dynamax Cannon <laughs> makes that really difficult for me, uh, since that will that's an easy Oko on Palkia whether I'm maxed or not. So um, what I did here in game one was pair it with Amoongus to try to get some redirection going. Amoongus has that Sash, and I'm pretty sure it can take a Dynamax Cannon anyway, um, on top of having uh, like a neutral attack from uh, neutral defenses into that Sludge Bomb and so on. Um, Kyrex obviously came in the back, and then for the fourth one, I was considering P2 for a while there because Eerie Impulse into Eternatus and Foul Play into uh, Groudon are both very good. But I ultimately settled on Alchemy for two reasons. First, of course, is the um, the Sweet Veil ability, which will uh, really help us against a potential Venusaur Sleep Powders, if that's how they intend to stop us from getting Trick Room up. And there's also the Fairy Typing, which would be uh, a very nice switch in for that big Dynamax Cannon uh, Dragon type attack. So Ola leads um, Eternatus Incineroar, which is a serious problem for my lead here. Um, reason being is that they can just fake out Amoongus and Dynamax Cannon Palkia, and if I had Protect on both of my Pokémon, this would be a non-issue. I could just double Protect and then go along with my plan of Redirection plus Trick Room, but Palkia foregoes Protect so it can have Trick Room and three um, double stat plus coverage. So that isn't an option, and I immediately decided to just go for this very hard read into exactly that play, because it's just kind of obvious and... Honestly, I probably just lose the game straight up there if I don't. So yeah, I swap Palkia into my fairy type, Alchemy, and then I protect Amoongus. Um, even though it's just a fake out potentially coming in, I um, I want to keep my Sash intact. So that uh, that is why I made that play. And as we can see here, I uh, looks like we called that perfectly. So fake out goes into Amoongus, I keep my Sash, and uh, Eternatus goes for the Dynamax Cannon, which is completely harmless. Now, the issue is that uh, despite this call, um, I have no real offensive pressure besides the Spore. So what I do is I um, I swap Alchemy back into Palkia, um, because there's no way they Dynamax get into a Fairy-type, and I go for Spore into Eternatus. Um, now, they could have doubled Amoongus here, is the thing, um, and I would have been in a really bad position had they done so. Um, but they didn't. They actually swap into Grimmsnarl, which is amazing, because that Prankster Grimmsnarl can, of course... Uh, bypass any speed control from uh, from Trick Room and uh, give me big problems like T Wave, Trick, uh, Full Incense, that kind of thing. But yeah, they swap it out. They give me a free Spore, and even though that Flare Blitz did a ton of damage into Amoongus, I was trusting my Sash. The burn really sucks, but it actually just gives me a free switch in, so that's not a huge deal. And I get the Spore into Grimstar. So at this point, uh, despite that unlucky burn, we're in a pretty good position here because uh, Amoongus goes down, um, and now we have both of our big restricted attackers uh, in against two Pokémon with very little offensive pressure, and one of them is so sleep. So we're doing great here. I choose uh, Calyrex. Alchemy's tempting because of the Decorate, but having the um, having two attackers, one of which is spread, is, is pretty big. Um, so Grimmsnarl has taken no sleep turns at this point also, since it swapped into the Spore, which is really great. 
Um, what that means is I can use Palkia to take out Incineroar because it is still faster than Incin out of Trick Room. And at the same time, I can set Trick Room with my Calyrex. We take out their only slow threat, and then we just have speed control for the rest of the game. Um, now, I take some time to decide here because I'm not sure what to hit Incineroar with for a little bit. Um, Hydro Pump is the safe pl is the uh, the safe kill, but uh, Eternatus would be a great sw uh, swap into that. Um, Quake wouldn't do very much to Groudon since it's neutral and non-stab. Um, but Wormwind is the uh, the great in between. It stabs, so it should take out Incin from this range. It'll do huge damage into Groudon with stab and give it an attack drop, and it would just Oko uh, Eternatus. So we go for that. Um, they don't, they opt not to switch out, which um, honestly in my in my opinion was a mistake um, if, if they assume that we're getting Trick Room up. Um, reason for that being that uh, Incin would do way better than Eternatus uh, under Trick Room, so if I were in their shoes, I probably would have swapped it out and sacked the Eternatus. The Eternatus. Um, but they don't. We take the uh, the easy KO on Incineroar, and we get a nice attack drop on it. Good stuff. Okay. So Calyrex goes for that Trick Room, which is amazing. Um, and now we're in a fantastic position. We've got a KO, we've got Trick Room up, and we've got both our Restricteds out under it. Um, they bring out Groudon, but um, you know, like I was saying, this is one of their four Ice-type weaknesses. Um, and uh, we can just keep attacking in. Um, Glacial Lance should be a two-hit KO on both of my opponent's Pokémon, and I decide to ultimately go for Wormwind uh, into Groudon again. Um, Grimmsnarl may be able to get uh, like a Spirit Break off or something, but uh, not super worried about it. The worst case is that Groudon underspeeds Palkia, and Grimmsnarl wakes up to use Spirit Break, but even then we have Alchemy in the back to uh, boost us back up with Decorate, if that is the case. Um, or we can just swap out later, so not a huge deal. And this is kind of that ideal position for this team too, where you ultimately want Trick Room up and you want Palkia Dynamaxed and Calyrex to stay small, because that is the way that we go about getting uh, a, a nice big spread there. So. Grimmsmell stays asleep, um, notably going first there, which means it was going for some kind of pranks remove. We get the Glacial Lance off, it's a, definitely a two-hit KO on Grimmsnarl and not quite on Groudon, so the play, the, uh, the attack into Groudon to get into that range is huge. Um, big damage, but not as much as you'd expect from a, uh, a Palkia with Life Orb into uh, something that's generally not as high on the special defense side. So this kind of clues us in that that Groudon is very likely a V, um, which is important, means it can't protect. Um, they go for Quake, just into Calyrex. It kind of makes sense, they could have gone for a, a, a Flare or a Rockfall. Um, Flare and Sun actually will Oko, um, but they were probably scared of, uh, of Protect, um, and actually with the Worm when it wouldn't have Oko, we would have gotten the, the Weakness Policy proc. So it was the safe play, but in reality, I think they needed to double the Calyrex um, and just hope for the kill there, because there's really no way they're coming back at this point in the game. Um, we just click our attacks, ultimately. Even if my opponent pulls out something miraculous, like a Prankster T-Wave plus full Para, um, Palkia should still pick up the KO on Grout on this turn, so it'd be fine. Um, Glacial Lance picks up the double KO, we get the times 2 uh, attack boost from that with Chilling Nay, and uh, Palkia's max attack doesn't get to go off and it doesn't really even matter. Um, at this point it's uh, it's 3v1, we still got uh, Trick Room up, um, and Eternatus is, uh, is not going to be able to take out both of us. <coughs> But yeah, like I was saying, I think Incineroar, swapping out Incineroar and sacking Eternatus earlier was definitely my opponent's best play. They could have gotten a, an Intimidate out onto uh, onto Calyrex and gotten a, uh, a nice parting shot off into, into Palkia, but um, not how they went about going for it. Um, we do just attack here. Um, I didn't calc it, but I was a little worried that Earth Power wouldn't kill, but if they managed to get... Um, if they protected here... Um, but the fact that they don't ultimately protect, um, if I were if I were in their shoes, I would have just forfeited at this point. Um, but the fact that they don't protect here tells me that they very likely do not have it. They could just be uh, choiced, which kind of makes sense that they uh, that that is the case since they uh, swapped it out uh, into that Amoongus. Um, 
I still don't know to the, uh, to this day uh, what they were actually running on that Eternatus, but um, it, it makes a lot of sense to me that it would be choiced, um, or at least for attack. Um, cool, so we roll directly into game two here. Um, now, as we queue up for game two, I'm already thinking about how to adjust, because to be honest, I probably shouldn't have won that game. Um, Eternatus switching out turn two was effectively a throw um, on their part, and also I just got that very big read turn one. So yeah, all this whole time I'm thinking about how can I adapt to this. Um, I ultimately decide uh, that Palkia is not a reliable setter um, with Eternatus uh, on the other side. So what I do settle on is a just a much more passive lead um, with P2 and Amoongus, and then bringing my Restricteds in the back to clean up. This is very basic, and a lot of people can uh, take advantage of this kind of... Uh, of this kind of passive lead, um, but Amoongus still puts on some pressure. The real thing we're worried about is uh, is a Venusaur lead here. Um, the the counter to this would be to just put Porygon 2 to sleep, um, so it can't set Trick Room, and then you know just be immune to Sleep Powder. Maybe like an Insin Venu lead would have been very good into uh, into my lead here. But um, the fact that I brought Alchemy to the last game, um, I'm hoping that discourages them from a sleep opener. So yeah, we uh, we go in, we see how see how this goes. Um, ultimately, we are playing a bit of rock paper scissors here. So uh, I figured that this was an educated guess as to how they were going to about, going to go about doing it. And they do do the same lead, which ultimately, like I was saying, it makes sense. They had the advantage with it last game, and uh, they only lost to a hard read on turn one and a bad play on turn two. So um, with this, um, basically, fake out can only go into one of these targets, right? Um, it can either fake out and stop Trick Room, or it can stop uh, Spore. Um, so I just click both. They, like, if that Eternatus has, like, Specs Flamethrower, for instance, which seems very likely if they're choiced, then, um, you know, they could fake out and Flamethrower Amoongus, but just like last game, that would give me a free switch into, uh, one of my Restricteds, which I would, uh, under Trick Room, which I'd love. Um, yeah, and they choose to fake out Amoongus, which I agree that is the more dangerous threat here. But the thing is that they just go for Dynamax Cannon into P2, and now Dynamax Cannon is very strong, and this Specs Dynamax Cannon it's incredibly strong, but this P2 is sassy, as most of them tend to be, um, and for that reason, doesn't do that much damage. Um, not even half, actually, for that matter. So we get Trick Room up, we have P2 and Amoongus in under Trick Room, um, the Sash is popped, that's still totally fine. Um, yeah, so from this point, I strongly consider using Recover, it'd be nice to have my P2 at full, but ultimately, it doesn't really put on any offensive pressure. It's uh, more more of a disruptive Pokemon. Foul play is only useful, uh, really, in like, niche circumstances. So instead of going for this recover, I ultimately decide to get Calyrex, Calyrex in to begin a sweep under Trick Room. Um, Incineroar is slower than Palkia, so that would not be a great play. They would have a free parting shot into me. Um, and then I go for the Spore into Eternatus. Great. So we get Calyrex in here. And they swap out Eternatus once again. Which, again, I... I just the, the fact that all signs are pointing to it not having Protect tells me that that's, that's not all that useful in a Trick Room matchup. In fact, like, maybe they should have even opted to keep that at home. But um, but yeah, they, uh, they allow their Grimstar to go to sleep yet again. And they go for this Flare Blitz into Amoongus, which does get the KO, but that's just going to give me another uh, a free switch in into Palkia. So now, once again, I have both of my restricted Pokemon in under Trick Room. Uh, only one turn of it has been used. Uh, we're in a pretty good position here. Um, now, the question is, who do I max? Um, like I was saying last game, ideally, you are... Um, ideally, you have Calyrex stay small and Palkia be the max one under Trick Room here. But the fact that Insin is um, the fact that Insin is slower than Palkia makes that very dangerous. Um, if they decide to take the risk and go for a parting shot into Palkia, then that uh, puts me on the back foot. So I decide to take the safe uh, play and go for a Quake with Calyrex into Incineroar. Um, my unnervability should disable a sh potential Shookaberry and just take it out. Um, but they swap it out um, into Groudon, which is a great play on their part. Um, Groudon will take a non-stab physical move, um, well, about as well as anything on their team will, right? Um, but 
it'll still do a solid chunk of damage. And the reason I did Earth Power into that Grimmsnarl is that, um, you know, like last game, it has taken no sleep turns, so we get some free chip off into it. And after that point, we um, we're, we uh, we can hopefully pick it up with a max move of Calyrex, maybe even get a Grimne boost off of it. But the real thing is you just want to put it in range of an attack. Um, especially with Ensign potentially swapping back in, um, Calyrex is unlikely to pick up the Yoko without a boost of some kind. Um, and yeah, so you can see that Quake, it didn't do a ton to grout on, but it's still like a solid 40%, I'd say. Um, maybe a little less. Light Orb, Earth Power, and Grim. I'd say that's closer to 40, actually. But yeah, that's a, that's a really solid chip into both. Um, from here, uh, Hailstorm into Groudon seems way too obvious, especially with Incin in the back, so I go for it into Grimmsnarl, um, hoping to just KO, and then I cover that Groudon slot with a Spatial Rend. Um, it's special, it's Stab, it's Life Orb. It should do a good chunk um, into Groudon, even if it maxes, into Incin, and it would just straight up kill Eternatus. So um, yeah, we can see they swap an Incin here, which is kind of predictable. They want the uh, they want the uh, Intimidate to, uh, to slow down Calyrex's sweep, but... Um, They've pretty much just sacked their Intimidate here. With the amount of chip that Ensign took just from the Flare Blitz into Amoongus earlier, um, that puts it pretty close in range to just about anything that Palkia can throw at it. And Hailstorm, despite being at minus one, still kills Grimmsnarl. I wanna I wanna just reiterate, Palkia or Calyrex Ice is base 165 attack, I think, and that's a stab move, and it's a max move, which is base 130 or 40. So yeah, it's not a chance, uh, especially because most Grimmsnarls tend to lean specially defensive. Spatial Ren goes off into Incineroar and actually picks up the KO, which I wasn't 100% sure it would at the time, but uh, it kind of makes sense, uh, especially since a lot of Incineroars are running Impish these days um, in order to barely take a Calyrex Quake. Um, so yeah, we do that, um, Hail Chip is whatever, and now we're in a fantastic position because they just have both their... Uh, they have both their Restrictors in the back, but we still have Trick Run up, um, and Calyrex is uh, back at neutral attack. So at this point, um, I am pretty convinced that that Eternatus does not have Protect, um, and I really don't want to risk missing a KO onto it um, with a Spatial Run miss. I think we're, I think it's 90 or 95 percent accurate, <laughs> um, but uh, you know it, it would it would be silly to throw away a win um, at this point from that, and then we can just secure a uh, a three v one advantage. Um, I do actually swap Palkia out into Porygon too. The reason being that um, because I am foregoing attacking Groudon. Uh, I don't want to potentially lose it to a big physical max quake. I um this is probably a calc I should know. Um uh, but Palky has taken some chips, so even if I knew the calc off the top of my head, um it's a risk, right? Whereas uh P2 can take can hopefully take it, and even if it can't, um we just preserve our restricted to uh to have the 2v1 situation in the ground on later. Now um Yeah, it <clears throat> To be honest, it was probably unnecessary. Um, Palkia could have just attacked Groudon. We know from game one that we do underspeed it, uh, which is really big. But uh, but yeah, this was still the safe play in my opinion. Um, Hailstorm goes off into uh, into the Eternatus. Obvious Oko there. Um, Cool. So now we do have that 3v1 situation, um, and we can see what Groudon goes for. Um, attacking my max Calyrex with a super effective move would be really silly, it would just, uh, it would grant me my weakness policy, and they know that. So yeah, as predicted, they go for the Quake into, um, into P2, and we actually do just barely hold on. Um, and the hail is up, but a uh, stroke of good fortune, maybe at least, I I'm, I'm not sure if it's really good luck, I would have taken the free switch in happily here, um, but we do manage to hold on with the hail chip with 1 HP. Um, yeah, honestly, I would say that survival is actually a bit of bad luck, but we're still in a great position, so it doesn't really matter. Um, from here, plus one Glacial, single target probably just kills, um, but I wanted to play it safe. Um, one calc I do know is that um, outside of Sun, Flare does not Oko uh, small Calyrex um, from Groudon, and neither does Rockfall. It's effectively the same calc, so I go for a safe play. I go for Trick Room and Recover. Um, the absolute worst case here is that they get a crit onto Calyrex and kill it. Um, but yeah, they probably know that Calc too, and they just go to eliminate Porygon, but I, I think that wasn't their out. Um, so at this point I get Trick Room back up, and now I have a fresh Trick Room with a plus one Calyrex. Uh, 
into just a Groudon and Palkia coming back in too, and this is a situation where my Palkia underspeeds, so we have the speed control, we have the numbers, we have the power, they've even taken more chip than us. Um, the only thing in my opponent's favor right now is the Dynamax, um, but as I said before, I already know that minus any crits, um, Groudon cannot take us out. Um, and again, I could have just taken the win with a with this Glacial Lance here, but I go for the safer play, which is a, uh, a Protect and a uh, and just an attack. I go for Hydro Pump, which is probably not as safe. The 80% accurate is a bit iffy. But the reason is just, um, I know I didn't really, uh, I wasn't playing with Calx at this point. Um, I figure that if they attack Calyrex, then fine. Uh, and then I can absolutely take the kill once their Max is going to this move. And they actually just go ahead and proc my, uh, proc my weakness policy. That might have been the move on an earlier turn, but it's far too late at this point. Um, they even get rid of the sand, which would have hurt me. Um, and now we're a plus three Calyrex, and we still have three turns of Trick Room to go. So this is 100% over. Um, from here, we can just click our attacks. Um, Groudon can maybe go for like a triple Protect. But even then, I don't think a neutral P Blades is going to take out Calyrex. Um, so, yeah, we 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 one hundred percent win this one at this point. Um, we go for the Glacial Lance. This takes the KO. Um, good games to Ola, uh, and it was really awesome that I got to uh, take home my first win in the World Cup. Um, I will hopefully be um, uploading more matches as time goes on. I'll try to switch up my teams, but you know, if something's really successful, I'm not going to rule out using the same team multiple weeks in a row. We're just going to see how we go from there. Um, until next time.